Okay, everyone, just a follow up here. Um, I already showed you that I cut my uh, my bronze bushing off, so uh, now I'm going to show you how I'm going to set this up, whether it be right, wrong, or indifferent, but I don't know any better, so uh, this is the way that uh, Razor's going to be doing it. So um, I figure that uh, if I set this up in here, this is already set up for the uh, for the full length of bronze that I had in here. So I went and got a uh, one of my parallels. I'm just going to run this behind here, if I can get it to fit, and just kind of tentatively set this up. Give it a little snug. Okay. And now I'm going to run my uh, my compound up against here. using the flat on my compound to uh, basically kind of straighten it out in my jaws and pushing against my parallel here that should kind of uh, should kind of do it so now see this is uh, pretty snug for the most part So we'll take this out, give it a go here, make sure everything's clear. Hey, hey that looks pretty good. Um, the problem is, is that uh, obviously it's not, uh, it's not centered. So seeing as I'm going to be boring out the inside of this thing, we obviously have to make sure that it is uh, centered in our chuck. So again, my method, you guys, um, I don't know how well you can see this, but my indicator is mounted onto a tool holder and it's magnetic. Uh, if you guys can see this, uh, this is the magnet section here and it sticks to my tool holder as you can see right there and uh, one of these days I'm going to build me a block <laughs> dedicated to hold this thing but I uh, just haven't gotten around to it yet it's uh, it's kind of low on the totem pole for projects and things to get done things that need to be done so uh, this is uh, this is how I do it in the meantime so anyway uh, you guys obviously can't see my dial but I um, turn this in and I get a full revolution on my dial so I know that's loaded and so right now I'm on zero and so I will turn this 180 degrees to the opposite jaw and it shows you guys can't see it but it shows that I'm exactly six thousandths off okay so as what I do I have my two wrenches one long one one short one short one obviously for here and long one to clear the dial and uh, I work these against each other and uh, turn this and I turn this to three thousandths because half a six obviously is three okay and like I said working against each other to try to dial that in and then I spin it back to its original jaw and again you guys can't see it but I am exactly three thousandths on the button so now I just turn it 90 degrees okay and now I'm reading four thousandths the opposite direction so that means that I have to bring it back this way to my three thousandths positive that it's off from the other two jaws okay so there's my three thousandths positive tighten them up against each other just snug not really tighten but snug and then uh, spin this around to see how concentric my bronze piece is and I'm uh, about three thousandths and two tenths on this side so we'll just tighten it up here a, a smidgen and exactly three thousandths there uh, it's off about maybe half thousandths on this side 
So we'll snug that to three. 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 So uh, that's about as good as it's going to get, boys and girls. So uh, again, you know, being a small piece like that, I can't really crank on it too much because uh, it's going to distort it, obviously. So um, as far as I'm concerned now, this is ready to... Um, I, I put the side in that was not... That was bare. This is the bare end right here. This is the side that I parted. So it's it it's a little cleaner, to say the least. And so now I'm going to go ahead and clean up that face right there and get my boring bar, which is right here. If that will fit in there, it might not even fit, so I might have to change it. But anyway, let's take this out. And uh, I have a um, little aluminum plug, if you will, that covers that. So my needle is never exposed. So in case something drops on it or whatever, it's not going to bend it. And now I can put my uh, my favorite cutter in here. See if it'll clear. Uh, it's pretty close. So I think that I will make a quick adjustment here. Like I keep keep telling you guys, be safe out there, man. Just uh, you know, don't take any chances. It's just not worth getting hurt. So. Now, see, I can run this up in here, and I've got plenty of clearance from my jaws to my tool holder, and yet the cutter is, is in there to uh, do its thing. So, um, that being said, make sure that everything's good. Let's uh, turn it on, and uh, yeah, things look looks really good eyeballing this down against it uh, it looks really good so I'm just gonna take a light cut here I don't know if you guys can hear that but it's uh, barely touching on the outside edge yeah it's just that's almost like a skim coat skin cut right there This is a little bit long. I cut it a little bit long uh, purposely so I can face it and uh, clean it up and take care of any issues. So um, another thing that I like doing, I don't know if this is a common practice or not either, is that because it's kind of hard to control your movement on the carriage, um, I, I sometimes will lock this down so now it's, it's snug and I will go in and out with my compound and I can control the amount of travel now with the compound so I don't have to try to hold it while I'm turning while I'm um, turning my dial and it seems to produce a little better finish for me I still have a I still have a dark spot on here that you can see that tells me that it's not completely uh, cleaned up So again, I just bump it in with my compound, and there we go. That is a beautiful thing right there. Okay, so now I'll release this, back this off, and uh, get my trusty Westy file here, and not knock off this edge right here. Okay, take this, now like I said, I don't know if my boring bar will fit in there, oh man, it will, just barely, okay, so, let's uh, see if Razor can uh, do some boring here, bore you guys, as the old common joke seems to be, I'm going to bore you with some boring. Okay, 
I'm not sure how much I have to take out of there. I haven't done any preliminary measurements yet. Oh, it's going to be tight. And, uh, looks like that I might not be able to, uh, use this one after all. It might be too big. I think it's hitting on the bottom. Oh yeah, it is big time. Okay. So, uh, I'll have to, uh, dig out something else and, uh, attempt to bore this thing. So, let's see here. I might have something readily available. I try to keep all my my stuff relatively close. So I don't have to do a lot of searching. In this case, I believe that what I'm looking for, I oh, as a matter of fact, I do. It's right here. <laughs> so wait. Okay, here's my little boring bar. So, put him back. Run this guy up here. Oh, yeah. We're in like Flynn. Okay, just make sure that, uh, see, I, I grabbed this to mount this up. This is obviously, you know, hand ground. I didn't grind this, but uh, somebody did. And uh, I figured that uh, it'd be worth keeping and I might use it one day, but today's not that day. So, let's, uh, let's take a skim pass in there because I know that uh, this, <laughs> will not fit in that hole. It has, uh, has some material that needs to come out of there. So just let me get things set up here and uh, make sure that uh, it will bore like I'm looking for. And because I don't have a drivetrain, I have to feed all this by hand. Surprisingly enough, I kind of like, I kind of actually like um, feeding this by hand. It gives me a feel for the metal, it gives me a feel for the cutting. Of course, now that I've come back from Randy's and, uh, you know, we wound up cutting my lead screws for the, uh, for my mill. There's no way that you could stand here and feed those cuts that he did on his machine because the uh, the chips were just like scalding hot. And uh, to get the finish on there, obviously, you can't control that either if you're doing it by hand. But this being such a small part, which most of my, uh, my jobs are, they're small. Uh, doing some cleanup passes here, taking about maybe three, four thousandths at a time. Until I get a nice shiny surface inside there. And uh, we're getting close, we're not quite there yet. right there so I don't know if you guys can see that or not but uh, it's uh, very clean and shiny on the inside of that thing now 
So, let's put our part in there. No, nope, it won't quite go. So let's just crank out some more. <laughs> nah, just kidding. I only want to do this once, even though I am having fun. And uh, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I try to keep all my tooling and everything that I might need to uh, do lathe work. Um, try to keep it close to where I don't have to walk across my shop to get something. So, um, let's get out our little snap gauges. Find the one that might work. I think that might do the job right there. And, uh, oops. Nope, he's too big. And that's the smallest one I have. Damn. <laughs> Okay, then. Uh, how am I going to measure this? I don't know. Let's take a measurement on this. With my trusty, westy Chinese gauges. And according to this, I'm uh, 501 thousandths. And look at that. It's off by two thousandths. Oh. Off by one thousand, so oh, it's three thousandths now. Oh, it's one thousand positive. So uh, yeah, these things are uh, numb. One thousandths under five. <laughs> anyway, basically half inch. So let's uh, let's do this just for shits and giggles. Anyway, looks like four fifty, according to these. Uh, you know what, I think, I think I might have, oh man, look at this, this would work perfectly if I had a bigger bore, so, dang it. No, uh, no worky on this one, but at least I got one for the for the next or for the bigger ones. All right, so uh, I don't know. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I think I'm just gonna have to sneak up on this thing. To be honest with you guys, I don't have any real way of measuring it. Um, oh, there goes my compressor. Let me go turn that off real quick. Hate it when that happens. Okay, so again, um, you know, just looking at this thing, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm probably guessing that um, this the head of this fits in there pretty loose. So I probably have about ten thousandths, maybe, you know, ten thousand, twenty thousandths overall. From that fitting but yet it seems really close to my thread and uh, so my thread I mean it looks like that maybe there's 30 thousandths there you know so maybe a total of 60 on the on the dial to uh, to get this thing to clear and uh, I actually want a nice fit but a loose fit so it spins so the bushing spins on this on this shaft here this is what I'm looking for so that being said, you guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and just play with this. Um, you see my setup. You see how I'm um, approaching this whole thing. So um, I will bring you back, and uh, hopefully I won't screw this up so we can uh, look at the same part. So I'll be back, okay, because I don't want to bore you guys with all this.